guys welcome back okay so next triple three we're moving over is onto the aerosol car this car we did drive but this car was a bit rough it's actually very rough uh this is a car that you put clutch in and there's a whole lot of noises coming from the car um gears are up to crap on it motor motor sounds fairly nice on it this car is running on the airflow look this car has been resprayed before there has been work done to it so on this pacifica i think we're going to expect the unexpected on it right so we're going to carry on as per normal sifiso is going to start up on the interior i'll show you sneak butts on the interior if i find anything different i'm not going to go and strap on the whole interior i'm going to concentrate more with you on the kit because on the white car i didn't get to take the kit off with you guys so i'm going to concentrate on the exterior kit while sifiso is busy on the interior I'll move over to the engine bay again. Sifiso will move over to the boot, uh, to the boot area. Future will join us afterwards as well, and then uh, we'll start with the drivetrain uh, extraction as well. Okay, so bumpers. I just need to recap again on how to strap this uh, triple three bumper. If I'm not mistaken, I think we are holding on. Yeah, in the front with the two size 13 nuts and then we should have two 13 bolts on the sides let's just go through it let's see if i can remember it on the white car i didn't take the bumper off there so let's take a 10 and a 13. i think it was 13. so if you can you turn the tire to the right for me please so let's start by these ones here. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. So this feels like a tin. But the front one is definitely yeah, so this is okay so So these guys are using a nut and bolt in here and I don't know how. Okay, I'm gonna slide, let me take the front ones off first. I don't know how they manage to get a bolt in at the back. So this is all part of, like I told you, we're gonna expect the unexpected on this car. So this here is the arrow, one of the arrows and this is one of the higher numbered arrows. Again, I can't give you much information regarding the car, but I can't call this car entirely a survivor car. Right? So, you, like I told you, this car has been resprayed. There's been work done to it, but it's not a. Let's see. Okay, so the front is loose, right? Let me see on the side here yeah, what's holding on the side here yeah, quickly. So I can't call it a survivor car, but we can say that um, there's a lot of work that was done to the sky here. Uh, but again, it's 35 years old. So the cars would have had to have gotten sprayed and so on like that. It's just part of it's just part of the E30 heritage, if I can call it that. Okay, so you see, like this one here has got a not running through that other one is stripping out into it so that one is actually gonna give me a, a hard time okay now the other issue that you're facing here right is that the sky is running a valence and the triple trees don't need or they don't actually use a valence so like the is you have on the shadow lines and not the shadow lines on the ISs or any car with a kit with the mtech 2 kit they you would have your front spoiler in the front and then you'll have your valence at the back but your valence is basically there to secure your your oil cooler bolts onto it your fog lights will bolt onto it and so on like that the triple three doesn't run on it doesn't use a valence so under the apron there shouldn't be anything there Okay, so these screws here, I'm not even going to bother keeping them. Those are normal drywall screws on them. Let's 
sure what this way one there. I'm gonna pull this whole indicator out and see what is going on and how is it bolted down because you'll get all these funny mounts onto them okay so with the triple trees okay so this is a zkw brand they came the chrome bumpers came both with Bosch and as far as my knowledge goes, the later triple threes came with a ZKW. Well, not triple threes, the later cars with the MTEC kits came with Z uh, ZKWs because Bosch stopped manufacturing more drywalls. So this, one, this, is, this is now where the challenge comes in because you don't know what guys have done to this here before and where they've mounted and what's at the back of these units so this apron is supposed to have almost like a guide hole where your fog light holder clips into it right and this is the reason why you can see now that they're putting drywalls and that's not supposed to be used in here It's supposed to be quite simple to take out, but yeah. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip out uh, these beadings, if I can remember correctly, should. Okay, but this. So these beadings were supposed to run a clip system, right? But there's Sika Flex at the back of this beading. I found another two more screws on the inside. Yeah, two external screws. So we're only supposed to be holding with the two nuts in the front and then the two tins on the side. But here there's additional roughs put in. Okay, so this one is loose here. Okay, so let me just grab this one out here. And then I just need to come in and do the one fog light. Remove this fog light here and then I can pull the bumper. The apron out of so the front bumper will come in with come out with the apron so I took off the one side beading there and I was looking for the clips and again Sika flex all on the beading and that's why you'll find that you won't be able to line it up properly you won't get those gaps correct so the key about using the correct bolts nuts clips there's a mixture of all of them on the kit and so you you once once you use the correct uh, hardware to ball down you will be able to pull your gaps correctly and look these these things have stretched over the years so much so there is going to be sorry there is going to be places where you, okay so on the front bumpers basically you've got a funny stud that slides into the to the beading and then the stud will be coming out here with and you've got these wide washer knife wide um, washers on the nuts here right and that allows you to adjust it and actually to uh, line the beading up properly then on the edges you should have these clips here so you'll be able to pop these guys out but you don't really want to pop them out all the time because they do break but this here this plastic uh, I must just double check the plastic one this plastic one doesn't look right something doesn't look like here. But bottom line, this is how it clips out. So the clipping system that I was talking to you about is this here. So I'm going to take back what I said. I was actually wrong. That side is clipped incorrect. Here's the clips on the on the uh, spoiler itself, on the apron. And then this is the screw that I took out on the one side. It's basically just a guide screw. So the spoiler is actually not too bad. But yeah, let's move on. So... I'm gonna leave this guy here. 
right we're gonna strap them up later on and then we'll get to the chroming side of it and see look for the best bumpers etc etc so as you guys remember me working with the shadow line you'll see that the shadow line also had its valence on and you had different cooling grills on here you got another step grill on it firstly this valence is not supposed to be on this car right uh, we're going to pull the valence off and when we do assemble the valence doesn't have to get put on here but you can see this car was painted before you can see the wiring is a mess but as per our checklist we know that the wiring is a problem so i'm not going to pull i'm actually not going to pull the valence off now we can actually start with headlights removing the headlights uh let me pull the grills out the headlights out i'll get the valence out we know the front is ready uh, then we can start moving to the beatings Mm, do I really want to pull the beatings off now or do I want to pull the door cards off? Okay, we'll get to that now. No. So, headlights. I'm not going to move the camera away. This is a simple... Uh, what headlight is this? And we've got depots again. So, why people put depot headlights on a pre-facelift? I don't know. So, okay, wiring is cut here at the back. Okay, this here I am gonna show you. Okay, so the reason why I move the camera out is that you'll see, and this is why we're gonna take. You'll see that we will take time when we start with the wiring on this car. Uh, starting from the front of the car, all the wiring is cut off already there, right? Then we've got. A nest going on at the back. Okay, so. so I don't even know where to start unplugging here. Okay, that should free up this guy. Okay, okay I'm gonna leave this here for now. I'm gonna unplug this guy so there's a plug here and there's joins here and running to wherever else the dumbs are not connected uh this guy's got that headlight adjusters on them obviously there's no it's not supposed to come with headlight adjusters this is a chrome bumper so i'm just gonna leave this here this is not going back on the car this will get thrown away and i'm just gonna come to the opposite end of the tire quickly and do the same thing yeah there's nothing connected on this side so nothing connected on this car nothing okay so let's take the headlights off quickly let's start pulling off the grills here same story you got clips here on the top And you'll see that these grills are not, these are aftermarket grills, but, or even if they are from BM, they're not the correct grills because of the opening on top here. So I'm leaving my clips, I'm leaving my exterior, my exterior bolts and nuts in here. This side is out already. I almost just dropped this clip in this hole. Okay, so you can see there's only one clip hole in this side. And let's see what we got all in here. So you got one screw. So, like I'm telling you, this car is not a barn find. It's not a. Uh, it's not a barn find. It's not a survivor car. It's a car that has. I'm not going to say built, it's not restored, it was just resprayed, maybe maintained, I don't know. But yeah. So we got, which looks to be the correct screw, one screw on the grill. This grill here has got a screw holding it, so I showed you guys before. Where the screw is in place was a guide that goes into the cradle. 
right and you don't really need to do that because you've got clips at the bottom the clips at the back into the valence or into the lower lip valence here so your clips are broken here hence them using a screw on top now this girl we're not going to use again and then this guy here we've got a fancy phillips here we've got another phillips on the other side so this is normal drywalls not drywalls this is normal self tappers of the shelf it's not a correct one so we'll have to resource for this vehicle and get the correct screws in front okay so it rolls off oh my word so they're using torque screws on this side they've got phillips on that side and they've got size tens as well Uh, so you got the tube there Thank you. So let's start over the tens and then I'll have to get my torques and pull that out There's another torx on this idea as well So guys, it's important you know what when you have pedigree vehicles, right? These are the small things that That matter this is the type of screw holding a headlight. I don't know where is this. And I'll show you an original screw shortly. Then the fan on this guy here is totally wrong. What I forgot. I actually forgot about this here on the white ripple tree, right? Now I'm reminded now by the oil cooler. The white ripple tree never had the oil cooler on it. So, no oil cooler, no oil cooler pipes. Uh, that's something that we need to make note of and get back onto the car because the oil cooler, unlike the M20s, the oil coolers and the M20s will sit in your valence. These oil coolers sit next to the radiator because there is space. There is only extra space. Hence, also not having a radiator and bolting it down into. Let me just get my torques. So this car will be a little bit different with regards to stripping because we'll have oil coolers and the oil cooler will actually come out with the motor. Uh, I think it's a Torx 30. Yep. Oh, what bolt is it? This it looks like it's from a newer BM. That on the other side is a totally different box. You can actually see the screws stripped here, forced into it. No, I like the Phillips. Looks like a box. That's still not the correct one to use. Okay, I'm going to drop this one. I'll try and pull it out with the headlight. Nope, it dropped. Okay. So, depots out. Soft. Just dump this depots there for me. Nice. Over here. And this here is the bolt used. So, these bolts are so simple. You can get them from the agents. They are quite cheap. This is a tool. You can get them from the agents, they're quite cheap, uh, they're quite common, the part numbers are out there. Uh, and it's the smaller things that I think just make, just give uniformity on a vehicle when assembling. So you know what's going to happen, right? You know that all the clips are going to be stretched as well. So we're going to have to replace all of that if there is even any. Okay, so here you can see how the wires will cut here. This is what happens when you need to use depots. Is it yes it fits the E30s but they're not meant 
for your restoration vehicles. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, now we want to get our valence out, right? So, you saw me take out the valence yesterday and we had your normal tins in here that's all into your cradle. You're supposed to have two tins here, two tins at the bottom, and there's nothing at the bottom. So, my question is, yeah, this is loose here at the bottom. So, we've only got a tin here. I've got a tin here. And when assembling a car, these are like small things that you can get to. Even the striping on the car is wrong. Because you can see, actually see the cutout lines on here and the color of the red is wrong. And I think the distance from here to here is wrong as well. This looks way too wide. But it can be wrong. Okay. Pull out here. So you know you know for a fact that these clips are gonna be stretched. So the Phillips doesn't want to go in here. This was forced into here to make it work. And this is a much thicker screw and thread, and it does feel that the valence is out somewhere at the bottom. So the side is loose. Okay, so the tin is out on the side here. So we're not too worried about trying to preserve the screws on this car. So I'm battling now with paint and I don't know if it's a little bit of putty holding here so some of the guys guys do super things right on one car we actually had the valence welded on yeah so expect the unexpected here I'm gonna damage into the fender. Yeah. And it is pink. So I don't really wanna. The fender, I don't know if it, it sounds. It's. I am gonna damage you. But I don't really have much of a choice. So, she got a hammer by you. So, Sophie's actually made some good progress on the inside. I just want to grab the hammer quickly so I can try and chop out this extra paint and check it right now What is going on here? Don't tell me these guys welded this. No, 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 it's fine.
gonna fuck up this fender nicely. This thing is welded on it. You still getting on? <laughs> I think I swore on camera. It's fine, get out, get out. Okay, so. Okay, so I'm not gonna be able to take this guy off. There is a weld in here. I'll pull it off with the fender and try and salvage what I can of the fender because you can see I'm already starting to damage. So I don't know why in... Okay, let me talk nicely. I don't know why the guys have to go and <laughs> weld up here when you just need to run a bolt. A bolt in here, a bolt in here. It's actually one bolt that runs in here. One bolt on that side there. You guys can align it as far as possible where you need to. You don't have to weld. Okay, so anyway, this is... This is my pet aids with regards to building a car that has come from somewhere else. Okay, so now we've got a we have got a fan of which I showed you guys how the original fan looks yesterday, right? This fan here firstly is cable tied to the radiator, so the guys have gone and made a nice gap between the cores. On a triple, it's okay, it's, this radiator is not an original radiator. Uh, and then cut off. So guys, let me explain to you quickly, right? There's no way in. There's no way on earth. I'm trying to watch my language here. That this small fan will cool this motor down, will cool the big six 3.5 down with this small radiator. On a triple three, so I don't know what people are smoking. <clears throat> I explained we, we we had a conversation yesterday. I explained to you guys yesterday um, with regards to the triple threes, right? So your output fan, you've actually got a two stage. You got two uh, temperature switches on the radiator. One is for I think we set to eighty two degrees and eighty eight degrees. So your first temperature comes on at about uh, no, it's eighty and eighty eight degrees. First temperature, uh, will, your first temperature switch will kick on at 80 degrees, run on temperature 1. Your, your temperature 2 setting is at 88, that will kick on. And that's a high output or it's a high wattage fan. This here is your DIY fans that you buy here at your local spare shops. There's no way that this here can do anything of the sort for this radiator. The radiator on the sky is already a small uh, radiator. That's an issue for the triple trees, for any M30. That's already an issue there. Now you go and add to the issue by running a smaller fan on it. Guys, that's not going to work. But anyway, this is going to get thrown out. We, can't even, we won't even think of using it because it is not correct. Okay, so headlights off, radiate, uh, fan out, front valence out. We're going to leave the bonnet in place because our old man over here, he wants the bonnets in before he starts uh, anything on bodywork just to get to make sure that we're lining up to make sure that we're all good and then we can start stripping panel wise off and by the way that's the reason why we haven't stripped off the rest of the panels but i think i explained to you guys on the doors we left the locks on for that reason there okay so sophie's actually made some good headway on the interior wow sophie so dashboard is out already uh did you find anything funny on the inside Eh? Yeah, not, not good. No wire. Okay, wait, I'm coming to you now. Let me come in. Let me just go. No, let me... Sorry. Okay, so Sophie's actually doing We started together, remember? So I'm actually very slow there. Okay. The yeah, the vent cage. So is there any harness on the vent cage? No harness on the vent cage? No controller? Okay, but it wasn't plugged in. Okay, so vent gauge not plugged in. No harness, you said, no? No harness. Okay. Uh, just on this guy here quickly. So what they've done is they've changed the carpet in the car, right? We'll come, we'll come to the side of things. And you'll actually see uh, how the carpet sits. So this... On the door, they have screws on it. Okay. So you can see here that they've recarpeted over the original carpet and it's got blue carpet on here, but it's got blue carpet with 
black top card so i don't know if they wanted to go with black interior and maybe that's why they changed the carpets yeah yeah just like speak about carpet and yeah no, this is not supposed to be like that but anyway let's get on building but you can see um there's something i want to show you sophie before you strip this guy out here let me explain to the viewers here quickly so i think this is the one clip this clip is broken here right and i was explaining to you guys about these clips that sit behind the door cards the other day so you've got three clips here right and i was trying to explain to you the why they why it's actually crucial to have them and when you do find clean door cards why you want to try and preserve them because if you don't if you're unable to get those clips lined up properly you're going to be left with this issue where you can never line the door card up to your window level so that was the significance and the importance of those clips there anyway guys i'm gonna start now with the kit and the beatings okay so with this kit here, we, your 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 beatings normally have general clips on them right that's your standard clips but you know that we're finding a lot of um, adhesives on them so you can see there's a problem here already the thing is okay so this is clipped in here and why that guy was loose let me use this guy why why this guy was loose is because th this is a stupid 50 cents grommet that you can purchase but there's no grommet in here so you've got call it the positive grommet and the negative grommet like this one's got the grommet in there call this your negative grommet call this your positive grommet you've got your correct grommets on the beatings or your correct uh, clips on the beatings but these grommets are not on there and you will never line this car properly you will never get it to sit nice and flush if you don't use the correct beatings i mean clips in place i'm gonna pull off the indicator quickly as well so is there anything connected on this car and i wondered why when we've done a checklist on this vehicle where well, there's so many mechanic not mechanical wiring issues but the, the thing is i don't even see the harness here for the indicator okay anyway so we know that this harness on this car is going to be a big problem but anyway so with your take one kids it's a very simple setup you normally have clips on the side here so you got it's very it's a very similar clip to your beading clips that sit on the top here and at the bottom you've got a clipping system that clips onto your lap so that's normally a size 10 uh, rough thread on there pull it in rough thread off pull your clip out and then we can pop the the sill off here there shouldn't be anything in the front holding up in the front so when we put the when we put the um a replica to, together yes, yes. when we put the replica together we uh, i initially thought that i needed clips in the front there right but you don't need clips there um you don't need any clips there you, your clips are basically top and bottom and that shouldn't have any holes but over the years you'll see that guys have made holes in them and put uh screws through into the fender okay so i've got a whole lot of sika flex and some clips here so these clips are actually very worn out you can see these beatings were taken off before all right and they should just literally pop out these guys so putting these beatings on always give you a hard time so i think no, i didn't break it this is the wrong clip on you then you're supposed to uh, at the end you're supposed to use the there's a screw that comes out of this clip here and you can see that they've substituted it with 
sicker flex. And then the back bearing is basically the same scenario. I shouldn't even need a screwdriver here. There should be a screw at the back here by the by the wheel arch, and then you've got clips on the rest, but there is nothing in here. Remember, I'm using a screwdriver here. We are stripping, we are paint stripping this car, so I'm not too fond of it. And you can see sicker flex right through so yes it is coming off easier than it should but it's not supposed to be that way so i'm gonna get the creeper now and i just want to see what is going on underneath the car on the side so we can start taking off the side shot We should have no clip. There's nothing here. I'm just trying to feel if these guys use. I can hear it use of stretching. So we've got one clip in here. Just gonna see. You can feel the clip at the back. Sorry, these are eight, not tens. So guys, remember that a lot of this footage is not um, so I'm for the we, We're recording as we're going on, right? So I haven't uh, Sass the car out. I haven't gone through the car besides for what I've shown you on video. So that's why you'll find sometimes I run under looking for a size 10 cube or sriracha or whatever it is, and then I find out that it's an 8. So we're going and we're trying to be as raw as possible just to show you what we actually go through. Okay, I'm gonna battle to get this guy in here, so I'm gonna have to use an 8 spinner. One eight tube. So if you got eight inside, so hey, spinner. Is it hanging? Ryan, just pause there. I'm gonna see if the eight nut driver is gonna work there. Okay, Raynan, you can carry on. Okay. Yes, I just use the eight nut driver here. These are actually the correct rough reds to use in here. But we need to see what we can do on this kit because this kit is ballooning for some reason so i'm just having a look at it here underneath what's causing it to balloon i don't know okay so this old clip is stunning yeah it's back okay that's about there Okay, that's blaming out here. This clip is broken off here. So this kit is loose here, but now when you move the kit like this here, right, the clips holding it in place will normally allow it to flex a little bit in the center because it's not flexing in the center. Tells me that there is an adhesive that they've used. Yeah. Right? And clips. 
out. Okay, well, at least it's not as bad as the empty toolkits that we've seen. Okay, so nice, that's out. But this here is the ballooning that I was talking about. Here's the clips in place, yes, you can see these guys popped out, right? And we'd like to keep the rest of the clips as well because you can see. There's only one, two, three, supposed to be one, two, three, four clips and five, but that's not a full-on clip there, and I've only taken out two. So, I'm not going to record the other side because we are battling with video durations uh, on YouTube. Right, and it is also a bit of a waste. What I will do is I will record if we do find something. Um, that's not supposed to be on the vehicle or something special or something of the sort. Then I will record and show you guys as well. For now, we're going to carry on stripping, pulling the rest out. Sophie's done quite far on the interior. Uh, I'm going to start stripping out the engine bay, but I'm going to record that so we can see what we find there. And then we're going to get ready to get the car into the jig. Check this off, he's done in the inside already. 